Jesus.
Wengine la baba na la mwana na la roho mtakatifu. Neema ya Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo na upendo wa Mungu Baba na ushirika wa Roho Mtakatifu biwe na nyinyi wote. Tumsifu Yesu Kristo. Daima na milele. Daima na milele. Tumsifu Yesu Kristo. Tumejumuika hapa kama jamii ya mama waludi kama chaplain si yote imekutana hapa siku ya leo ili tuweze kusherekea sikukuu ya msimamizi wetu mwombezi wetu mama waludi na siku ya leo tunakuja pia hapa ili tuweze kutoa shukrani zetu kwa Mwenyezi Mungu kama vile Abrahamu alimtumaini Mwenyezi Mungu na kama tayari kumtolea Mwenyezi Mungu Isaka hivi na sisi tunapotoa shukrani zetu Mwenyezi Mungu huyo yatupatia na zaidi baada ya Abrahamu kwa tayari kumtoa Isaka Mungu akampa mwana kondoo ambaye alitolewa sadaka na Abrahamu basi akaita mahali pale Yehova jire yani God provide when we give out to God what we, we have God provides and blesses us all the more. Many a times I've not been charitable to God. I've not given out myself. I've not given out my things that I am to God. For us to celebrate what it is like a Christmas, let us call to mind our sins. <coughs> Nani ndugu zangu kwani nimekosa mno kwa mawazo kwa maneno kwa matendo na kwa kutimiza wajibu nimekosa mimi nimekosa mimi nimekosa sana hiyo maana na mwaba Maria mwenye hii bikira daima malaika na watakatifu wote nani ndugu zangu niombeni kupana Mungu wetu Mungu mwenyezi aturumia tusamehe dhambi zetu na tufikishe kwenye uzima wa milele. Oh. 
Mungu mwenye huruma. Tutujalie msaada wako katika udhaifu wetu. Ili sisi tunawadimisha kumbukumbu ya mzazi wa Mungu asiye na doa la dhambi. Ondokane na maovu yetu kwenye msaada wa mwombezi yake. Tunaomba hayo kwa je ya Kristo. Wana wanaishi na kutawala nawe katika umoja wa Roho Mtakatifu. Mungu daima na milele. Somo katika kitabu cha mwanzo Siku zile Mungu alimjaribu Abrahamu akamwambia Abrahamu naye akaitika Mimi hapa Mungu akasema Umtoe mwanao Isaka Mwanao wa pekee endelee Uende katika nchi ya Mungu na huko utatoa sadaka ya kutokezwa juu ya mlima 
akimtakao kuonyesha walipofika mahali pale alipoambiwa na Mungu Abrahamu akajenga hapo altari akapanga kuni Abrahamu akanyosha mkono akashika kisu amkinje mwanao lakini malaika wa Bwana akamvuta toka mbinguni akasema Abrahamu Abrahamu naye akaitika Nini hapa Malaika akasema Usimnyoshe mtoto wako mkono Usimtende neno lolote Huku mkatalia mwanao Mwanao wa pekee Abrahamu akainua macho Akaona kondoo dume Aminaswa kitakani kwa pembe zake Abrahamu akaenda akamtoa kondoo akamtoa sadaka ya kutokezwa badala ya mwanawe Malaika wa Bwana akamuita Abrahamu mara ya pili toka mbinguni akasema Na hapa kwa nafsi yangu asema Bwana kwa kuwa umefanya jambo hilo wala huku nikatalia mwanao mwanao wa pekee mimi nitakujaza baraka nitaufanya nita uzao wako kuwa mwingi kama nyota za mbingu na kama mchanga ulioko pwani ya baharini tena uzao wako utashinda mlango wa ma, maadui wake katika uzao wako mataifa yote ya dunia yatajipatia baraka kwa sababu umetii sauti yangu neno la Bwana Zaburi ya kuitikizana Nitatembea mbele za Bwana katika nchi za walio hai Nitatembea mbele za Bwana katika nchi za walio hai Nitatembea mbele za Bwana katika nchi za walio hai Nitatembea mbele za Bwana katika nchi za Nita sembea mbele za Bwana katika nchi za walio hai Nita sembea mbele za Bwana katika nchi za walio hai Nita sembea mbele za Bwana katika nchi za walio hai nitatembea mbele za Bwana katika nchi za walio hai niliamini hata niliposema mimi nimethabika sana kila zamani kwa macho ni pa Bwana kifo cha watakatifu wake nitatembea mbele za Bwana katika nchi za walio hai nitatembea mbele za Bwana katika nchi za Mimi ni mtumishi wako 
rafiki karibu kwa wageni ndugu zangu kama Mungu yipo upande wetu unaye anayeweza kupambana nasi yeye asiyekataa kumtoa mwana wake mwenyewe basi akamtoa kwa ajili yetu sisi sote je huyo akose kutukirimia yote pamoja naye ni nani anayeweza kuwashtaki wateule wa Mungu ni Mungu anayewapa watu uadilifu nani anayewahukumu Kristo Yesu aliyekufa na zaidi ya hayo aliyekufuka na kuwako kuume kwa Mungu ndiye yeye anayetuombea neno la Bwana Sanjiyo la injili Wakati ule Yesu aliwachukua Petro, Yakobo na Yohane akawapeleka juu ya mlima mrefu wawe peke yao. Akakeuka sura mbele yao. Mavazi yake yalingaa yakawa meupe. Kisha Elia pamoja na Musa waliwatokea walikuwa kimsungumza na Yesu. Petro akamwambia Yesu Rabi ni vizuri sisi kuwepo hapa Afadhali tujenge vipanda vitatu kimoja chako kimoja cha Musa na kimoja cha Elia Hakujuala kusema kwa kuwa waliingiwa na hofu nyingi Kisha wingu likatokea ikawatia kifuli sauti ikatoka katika wingu ikisema wewe ni mwanangu mpendwa msikilizeni yeye mara walipotazama tena wako na mtu ila Yesu peke yake pamoja nao waliposhuka mlimani aliwakataza wasimwambie mtu walioyaona mpaka mwana wa mtu atakapo kuwa amekufuka katika wao wakalishika neno lile wakajadiliana wao kwa wao maana ya kufufuka katika wao injili ya bwana
mtakatifu Yesu Kristo. Daima na milele. Leo ningependa tuweze kutafakari kuhusu kumpenda Mwenyezi Mungu. Falling in love with God. Today is the second Sunday of Lent. Our reading comes from the book of Genesis chapter 1 chapter 22 verse 1 to 18. Psalms 116 Romans chapter 8 verse 1 and verse 4. The gospel reading comes from the gospel of Mark chapter 9 verse number 2 to 10. The theme of today is falling in love with God. Falling in love with God. There is a saying that says, my dear brothers and sisters, you will never change your actions. You will never change your actions until you change your mindset. You will never change your actions until you change your mindset. Today, we talk about transfiguration of the Lord. And I was asking myself, what is transfiguration? And I found some synonymous words to transfiguration. I said, transfiguration can also mean transformation. Transfiguration can also mean metamorphosis. I was trying to remind myself some sons, primary sons, metamorphosis. What do you mean about metamorphosis? What is metamorphosis? What is good? What is metamorphosis? Okay. okay, what do we call this process? Where give it up. Where there is eggs after a moment there is what you call love. After a moment, there is called pupa. And after that, sometimes there is something, something we call Adam. What do you call that? What do you call that process? Eh? Is that metamorphosis? What is that? Eh? Complete metamorphosis. Oh, you have complete metamorphosis. Now I was talking about transfiguration and I said transfiguration can be can be also be called a process of metamorphosis. Peter was thinking only about remaining at the glory of God. They were in that point of the glory of God. And they were thinking of remaining there. But Peter had to change because that was not the will of God. Peter had the idea of making tents in order that they can remain there, but he had to be made flexible to change because Jesus was first of all going to Jerusalem for him to suffer death Fiction and later on to the resurrection. That is why he wants them not to tell anybody until the man, son of man is resurrected from the dead. Abraham in the first city is a perfect example of changing on how we see God. Every other moment should be a moment of you to experience 
or to see the change that God is doing in your life, to see that metamorphosis, to see that transfiguration, to see that transformation. And Abraham experienced the transformation of God, experienced how God was changing there, here and there. But what is very uh, surprising all the time with things about change is that we are fear. One of the obstacles to change mostly is fear. That is why you hear in the gospel reading that they were full and they were full of fear. They were afraid. Walingiwa na hofu mwingi. Wakashindwa la kusema. Kila mara wapenzi wa Mungu uoga. Ni kitu ambacho kinatufanya sisi tusiweze kufanya mabadiliko katika maisha. Tusiweze kupata eh, kubadilika ama kubadilishwa kila wakati. Alikuwa anajiuliza what is fear? Fear is the unpleasant emotion caused by threats of danger, pain or even harm. Unpleasant emotion. And nobody would like to feel emotionally unpleasant. Nobody would want to feel the danger of harm. Nobody would want to feel the threats that are happening. And that is why we always find ourselves afraid of change. In fear, you cannot do anything. You cannot change. You can't change your mindset wanting to remain in glory. They were on top of a mountain. I was asking myself, mountain. I uh, was trying to. How many mountains do we know in the Bible? How many mountains do we know? I will not prefer uh, examples. No, uh, examples of mountains. Let me say examples of mountains in the in the Bible. Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai. Mount Carmel, Mount Oreb, Mount Moria, Mount Olives, Mount Zion, Ararat, Mount Tabu. Okay, these examples of mountains in the first reading. We hear that Moses went to sacrifice the son at Mount at Mount Moria. In the gospel reading, the disciples experienced the glory and the transfiguration of the Lord at Mount. Where did the transfiguration take place? That is good. Where did the transfiguration take place? Jesus came with papers and slapped into the Bible. You don't know. <laughs> On the sixth day, after six days, Jesus went with his disciples, Peter, James, and John, to Mount Tabu. And, they were, and he was transfigured in their presence. Mountains. There's also a mountain called Mount Hammond. In the mountain, that is where the early people believe that God lives in the mountains. People believe that when you go to the mountain, you are so closer to God. And this is a place where God openly met his people. When you read in the, in the book of Exodus, Chapter 24, verse 12 to 18. Moses went and met the Lord in Mount Sinai. Moses met with God at Mount Sinai. First Kings chapter 19, verse 8 to 18. Moses met uh, God met with Elijah on the mountain 
We say when you are going to the mountain, you are going to experience God. You are going to meet God. You hear people say, I'm going for prayer. I'm going for retreat. I'm going for the collection. I'm going to the mountain of the Lord. In prayer, when we are in the mood of prayer, that is the moment when transfiguration takes place. That is the moment when transformation takes place. That is where the metamorphosis of our life takes place. Because we are closer to God. So every other time when you come to this experience of mass, every other time when you go there to the assembly and pray, make sure that you are going to the mountain of the Lord. Make sure you are going to meet God. Make sure you are going to make a change, a metamorphosis of life, a transformation of life. Because in the mood of prayer, that is when transfiguration happens. And that is why you hear today the psalmist says, I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. In the Tembea, the Tembea Katika, Uwepo wa Mungu katika inje wa lio. Utatembea katika uwepo wa Mungu katika hinji ya walio hai. Utatembea mbele za Bwana katika inji za walio hai. When we are in the presence of when you are walking in the presence of God, then transformation happens. Then we get life. Then we get a living. Abraham's Faith is put to test. Isaac was Abraham's only hope. Abraham had no other hope except Isaac. Isaac was to be that heir, was to be that descendant that would make Abraham to be the father of many nations. But now God is asking Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Asking Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. It is very difficult. It is always difficult for us to let go the things that we love dearly, the things that we own deeply in our life. Abraham loved Isaac. But yet again, when we give to God what He asks, he returns to us far more than we even or we could even imagine or dream for. When we give to God, God blesses us all the more. God gives us the graces all the more to receive his blessing, to receive from his abundance, to receive from his love. And that is why Abraham was given a ram for the sacrifice. And that place, Abraham, he named Jehovah Jireh. To me, God provides. God provides. Every other time, my dear brothers and sisters, when we give to God, God provides all the more. Today we are gathered here to give our, our collections, to give our 10%, give our thanksgiving to God. And when we give, God will bless us all the more. God will bless us all the more. Our sacrifices, when we sacrifice ourselves, the spiritual benefits, the blessing that we receive with God cannot be mentioned to the sacrifices that we make to God. So the blessing and the sacrifices of God are far much beyond our sacrifices. So I want to ask you today, have you in any time with all your love for God? Have you any time denied your children the presence to love God, to serve God, to be in the presence of God? Have you at time not even trusted God to provide for you? We are invited to put all our trust in God who provides. The purpose of testing 
Abraham's faith was to strengthen his character, was to strengthen his commitment to God, and is perfect time. When we go or we find ourselves in test, God is testing us to increase or to strengthen our character, our idea, our faithfulness towards him, to deepen our commitment. Abraham, during his time of struggle, during his time of hardship, of difficulty, he learned about God's ability to provide. He learned about God's ability to provide. During our difficult times, during our hard times, let us learn from God who is always omnipresent, who is always all powerful, who is always going to bless us. As with Abraham, God wants what is most precious, what is most, uh, what we treasure the most, what is most important for us. I was asking myself, what can be very important to God? And I remember this song that we normally sing when we are presenting our gifts or our offerings. What shall I offer to the Lord to make him happy? What shall I offer to the Lord? I may give it the best of my shoes. I may give it the best of my mouth. He may not take it. I may give it the best of my shoes. I was, I was saying. What is most precious to us cannot be a time to be precious to God. What we cherish, what we treasure the most can at times not be treasure uh, for God. And I told myself, the best treasure, the best precious gift that we can give to God is the gift of our lives. It is the gift of ourselves. If we treasure and we love and we cherish our lives, then we can give God the best. Let us always to, let us always learn to love, to treasure, and to cherish our lives so that when we give it back to God, we give Him the best of ourselves. The best of ourselves. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Abraham obeyed God. Abraham obeyed, obeyed the words of God. He obeyed wholeheartedly. Like Abraham, we have to hear the word of God. Even when we feel afraid, even when we feel we don't understand, even when we, feel we, we are in fear, even when we are in doubt, let us listen and believe in the word of God. To believe and to trust in God's word, because these are reliable and true since the past. Just the way God was faithful to Abraham, was faithful to Jacob, was faithful to David, then the word of God should be true and reliable even at the very moment of our lives. Let us always depend on the word of God in struggles, in dark times of our lives, in times of darkness, and that is why you even here today, the second reading says, uh, St. Paul to the Romans, if God is for us, who can be against us? There's nothing that can be against us if God is on our side. Therefore, for, our, for God to be on our side, for God to be for us, let us therefore listen to the voice. This voice is the voice of the Father. This voice, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Listening is a very important act of faith. Listening is a very important act of faith. We cannot be able to worship well. We cannot be able to worship God properly if we do not know how to listen. If we do not know how to listen. We cannot worship God well. We cannot worship God properly. We cannot worship God enough if we are not in a position to listen. 
Why is it important for us to listen? Because we receive faith by listening. Because we receive faith by listening. Because faith is proclaimed. And when we listen, only this faith can be passed to those who listen. Only faith can be passed on to those who are ready to listen. Listening to the words of God. Even listening to the actions of our Christian faith. Faith, my dear brothers and sisters, is nourished by listening. Faith is nourished by listening. Then, number two, why is it important for us to, to listen? The best expression of love is by listening. People who love listen all the time. People who love listen all the time. I want you to go back home, take a pen and a piece of paper and draw your face. Yes, I want you to go back home, take a pen and a piece of paper and draw your face. In your face, you will draw the eyes, you will draw the mouth, the nose and the ears. I want you to draw the ears properly and then remove the ears, draw them separately. When you have drawn them separately, bring the ears together and unite them. What you will get, you will get the figure of an art. You will get a drawing of an art. The heart I have said, those who listen, love all the time. The best expression of, of love is by listening. When you draw two ears together, you get the image and the, and the picture of the art. Those who listen less, talk and talk a lot, love little. So those who listen less and talk a lot, love, love a little. So I want you to ask yourself, how much have I loved? How much have I expressed this love for God, this love to others? Number three, listening is a prelude to dialogue. Many people, many countries are in war. They are in fights. We have a lot of enemies, and we people are fighting, people are dying because of war. That is why they are not ready to listen. Because listening is the key point, or is the opener to dialogue. It's the opener to dialogue. Of John of Paul the sixth said, the other name for peace is dialogue. Paul the sixth said, the other name for peace is dialogue. But I want to add this day today. The new name for peace is listening. The new name of peace, you can say, is listening. When we listen, then we can dialogue. And in listening, we achieve that peace. We achieve that peace. But people who don't listen are so full of obsession. They are obsessed of themselves. They are full of themselves. And that is why you never find them listening. People who don't listen are obsessed with actions. Just like Peter. Peter was so quick to say, let us make three things. He's so obsessed doing things quickly, quickly, quickly. Let us always be patient and listen. Let us not get obsessed with actions. Let us not be in speed to act. Let us always listen. The last thing, falling in love with God. Falling in love with God. 
during this Lenten season, we are invited to change and be closer to God. When we began Lent on a Lent Ashwedding Day, we read from the book of Prophet Joel. And Joel said, It's all to me with all your hearts. Read your hearts and note your comments. We have to sing. Sakini Yakasasa, Aseba Pana, Mimi Kwabi Yoyo Yetu Yote, Sakini Yakasasa, Aseba Pana, Mimi
we will have the benefits we have received from God. Christ, I think of God.
very full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among them. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Kuzwe bana mungu wa ulimwe 
wako tumepokea divai tunayo kutolea Itu dalam zabibu dala kazi ya mikono ya wanadamu na iwe kwetu inywa jitakiro utokozwe
Tuna kusiri kwa mabadilishano matakatifu haya Uzidishiwe nema ya ukumbuzi wa mile Tunaobayo kwa njo ya kwisto kwa na wetu Damu ya gano jipia na mabilele 
itakayomwaga kwa ajili yenu na kwa ajili ya wengi kwa mwendo ya dhambi fanyeni hivi kwa ukumbusho wa
Bwana kondoa Mungu. Kami za Mungu tukurumu. Bwana kondoa Mungu. Tazama Bwana kondoa Mungu. Tazama aondoe dhambi za ulimwengu. Eli yao waliandikwa kwenye kadhamu ya mwana Mungu. E Bwana, si sahihi uingie kwangu. Lakini sema neno tu na roho yangu itapona. Mwili na damu ya Kristo itulinde tupate uzima wa mili. Zazi vyote vitaliita wenye mwenye heri kwa maana Mungu amewangalia unyonge wa mtumishi wake
Bwana kwa kupokea mafumo matakatifu. Bafanya bidii kukutolea shukrani. Kwani ingawa tupo bado duniani tunatujalia kushirikishwa tayari mambo ya mbingu. Ni Bwana sisi tuliyopokea chakula cha mbinguni. Tuna kusisi sana ili mwana ambaye bikira Maria alimza. Uye baba wa ndudi na tuliyopokea katika sakramenti. Tumkiri kwa maneno na tuwapatane nae kwa mwenendo wetu. Anaishi na kutawala nawe katika umoja wa roho mtakatifu. Mungu taima na milele.
Tuzi baba na mwana na roho mtakatifu. Atukuzi baba na mwana na roho mtakatifu. Atukuzi baba na mwana na roho mtakatifu. Mama mpalizwa mbinguni. Mama walubi. Mama warazari takatifu. Mama malikia wa malaika. Takatifu Paulo. Takatifu Yohani. Takatifu Kolumbano. Takatifu wote wa mungu. Mwana awe nani. Awabariki na kualinda mungu mwenyezi. Baba na mwana na roho mtakatifu. Tupeni na amani kumpenda na kumtulikia mwana wetu Yesu Kristo. Ibane ya misa imekusha. Karibu na tuwe na siku njema. Asante.